All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Scott. He's Martin. He's the health coach. And uh, we had a bunch of questions. Yeah, and Scott yeah. is a wise old international nomadic digital traveler. Right. Just to be and clear. Martin, Martin and I have been working together for 20 years. So I've had a PhD education in functional medicine and metabolic typing. It's been awesome. Yeah. And we have some questions that came from uh, members of the group, and we thought we would address some of them. So this is from uh, Nemai or Nemai, sorry. Uh, advice, please, lovely people. I was put on amitriptyline. I can't spell it, sorry. I can't say it, sorry. To help me rest, sleep, but it made me put on so much weight. Has anybody been prescribed melatonin instead? Would that be better? I'm not sad, so I don't need an antidepressant. Martin, what do you think? All right, so two things. The main reason why we got here is sleep. I can't sleep. Now, that is, well, we'll discuss that. The second part is I gained a whole bunch of weight with this drug. The drug is dysregulating your autonomic nervous system. So it's messing around with all kinds of regulatory balances that and functions in your body. So no wonder. I don't know that there is a drug made by the pharmaceutical industry that does not have side effects. In fact, you should probably not call them side effects. You could call them effects because these drugs have those. They mess around or mess with your natural regulatory systems in the body. So sleep, having sleep problems is also an autonomic regulation issue. The autonomic nervous system has two branches, fight or flight, and rest, repair, digest. The first word was rest. It could have been sleep. So when you're in the sympathetic, the fight or flight side of it, you are preparing to fight for your life. You are, your blood pressure goes up, your digestion shuts down, you, your um, pupils dilate so you can see better, better peripheral vision and all kinds of stuff. Like you are ready to engage. And that's the fight or flight, which would be run away. There are two other sides to it. They are known as fawn and freeze. And you can see that, especially with kittens. If ever you take a kitten and pick it up by the scruff of his neck and hold it up, it goes limp. This same thing happens to humans, actually. If you <laughs> grab them like this, they actually go limp. And some people respond to stress that way. They just either freeze, as in unable to move, or fawn, which means they just fold. Uh, fainting is one of those responses. All of which we do not want. We want you in the rest, repair, digest, the parasympathetic. And that is associated with blood pressure dropping, uh, digestion moving along, and all kinds of repairs taking place in the body. So now how do you trigger these, the balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic. So for one, minerals, calcium activates the sympathetic, magnesium gets you into the parasympathetic. So taking a soak in magnesium, whether it's a bath soak, foot soak, or even oral, magnesium will slow you down and help you relax. The other is sodium potassium. Typically, you need more potassium for this. It may make you feel more relaxed as well. Further to that, if you have vagus system dysregulation, vagus nerve is the nerve that leaves just under your ear in the back of your skull and runs two branches through the body, connecting all major muscles, all major organs, and collecting the peripheral information sending it back to the brain, and then the brain evaluating it and sending then activation signals to that. It's the vagus nerve that controls the 
a sympathetic parasympathetic balance of the autonomic nervous system. So I mentioned minerals, push magnesium. Nutritionally, the most parasympathizing nutrient we know is chlorophyll. So you can push green things. Make your dinner really rich in green things or have a... I mean, you, you, you can get a bottle of chlorella powder from us, mix it with water or juice, drink it after, after dinner or with dinner. And then the third one, you need to know your uh, metabolic type because you have one of two dominances, either autonomic or oxidizer. Oxidizers get relaxed with fat and protein while autonomics get relaxed with carbohydrates and vice versa, meaning it's completely opposite. If you're an autonomic and eat fat, you're going to get anxious, nervous, and definitely not sleepy. And if you're an oxidizer, you'll produce that same effect with carbohydrates. So you need to figure out which triggers you into anxiety or nervousness and which calms you down. Now, you mentioned melatonin. Absolutely, melatonin is great. That's the hormone that gets released when the lights go out. And um, by all means, use it. It's great. It's a trigger to put you to sleep. Good many people wake up between 1 and 3 a.m., usually closer to 3 a.m. It's their adrenals waking them up because there's not enough glucose or glycogen available in circulation. The reason for that, your liver is busy doing other things from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. in your time zone. And if you don't have enough stored energy, you will wake up. And you need to feed the body. And you need to feed it the stuff that calms you down. Um, yeah, that, that would be a good start for sleep. So having listened to what you said, Martin, there's a couple things that I want to highlight. And one would be keeping a food journal because I know I will eat something and in the middle of the day, I'll be out for an hour, like just totally sound asleep. Oh, what did I eat? I shouldn't eat that, particularly if I need to be alert during the afternoon, right. but I never remember what it is. So have a food journal. And then make a note, like, how do you feel an hour later, six hours later, 12 hours later, the next day? And because I've noticed there's days where my body just aches and aches and aches. And then there's days where I have no aches at all. And I'm thinking that part of that is probably I ate something and yeah. it caused inflammation in my body, right? So My gosh, yeah. Scott, you are putting such in, important points on this. There, there are the short effects, and I only discuss the short effects. This pH balance from fats or proteins or carbohydrates, that's a one to three hour affair. After you digest it, it's over. But what you eat may have in it salicylates or oxalates or nightshades, or these are, they would be known as the solanaceae, solanin, that's the uh, alkaloid with which the nightshade plants make you feel awful if you suffer from that. But anyway, so these ones, they last longer. So if you have a salicylate problem, it will create friction in your body. It will create either a direct allergic or allergic-like reaction in your body, and you'll be irritated, irritable, unable to settle, having all kinds of issues. So that was really well caught, Scott. Thank you. So a nightshade would be something like a green pepper, a red pepper? Mm, yep. Tomato, potato, bell pepper, and uh, eggplant. Those are the most common ones. Okay. So tobacco. most of us are, What's that? Tobacco. Tobacco. Yeah. So if you chew tobacco or you smoke it, be aware uh, and if yeah, you're, and I, would, I would, potatoes would be the nightshade that everybody eats or m like the majority of people eat. 
So yeah. if you're eating lots of, you know, like French fries and chips and all the rest of it, right? So yeah, yeah if like you're for eating, example, yeah, for example, my body has a tolerance level to it. I can eat potatoes once a week. If I do it twice a week, I will be cranky. If I eat it three times a week, I will actually hurt. So that's that's my body. Your body may be different. You may eat potatoes and hurt for three weeks. Right. Or not be able to sleep. Yeah. Also right. possible. So the, the problem with not being able to rest, not being able to sleep, would that be, oftentimes we talk about um, acidic and... Oh, no. Alkaline. Alkaline, thank you. So I know when I get too alkaline, I just like, I'm just chill, sleep. man, and yeah. I sleep. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. That sympathetic, parasympathetic, fight, flight versus rest, repair, that also is a pH balance issue. The acidity is the sympathetic side, the fight or flight. The acidity, right. is, pardon me, the alkalinity is the rest and repair, the parasympathetic side. So if we're not resting, like Nimi's not resting, then is that, I mean, I think she put on a lot of weight, probably partly because of the drug and partly because if you're not resting, your body can't like metabolize the, it just stores everything, right? Mm. Oh dear. Well, so there are these signaling hormones that float around in our human body, specifically ghrelin and leptin. Leptin is the signaling molecule that your brain needs to get that says, I'm full. Ghrelin is the signaling molecule that says, you're hungry, eat more. So if the signaling is put out of whack, you will be eating because the brain says, we're starving. We're starving. Feed us, even though you're not. It's the signaling that's wrong. Oh, right. so, so then you're over, you're overeating. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'll be pushing more food because there's if you take your time and wait for the signal, the ghrelin ghrelin wakes you up and says, "Feed me." And then you start eating and the leptin is supposed to rise up and reach your brain to say, "We've had enough." And that that whole situation will um, somehow fail when you mess around with it with drugs. Right. Cool. So I think we've covered it. Try not to get on drugs. <laughs> Try, yeah. Make sure you rest. Do a food journal, which tells you, uh, and I think you made a great point about long term, right? Like if someone can eat a potato and be sore for three weeks, mm -hmm. then you have to kind of look back and say, okay, you know, what did I eat today and what happened today that was mm -hmm. different? Like if you were feeling fine, and then you eat something and you're sound asleep in the middle of the day, you can probably say what you ate in the last little while. That's a pH thing, yeah. Yeah, there's one there other thing, which is the histaminic thing, right? So if you, for example, are unable to sleep and take a histamine, uh, pardon me, antihistamine, and you have a nice sleep, there's your answer. It's the histamine signaling that you have a problem with and you need to solve that whichever it is that's triggering the histamine release. And the release is a response to something that's going on inside of your body. Whether you put something in or you thought, it some, thought of something. Like you could create a histamine response just by reliving some type of an experience. Oh, so when you're kind of like fading in and out, you're not unconscious, but you're sort of, daydreaming mm. and, and and it goes to some event like this happened to me today it was like why did i remember this unpleasant event <laughs> like you know why wasn't i like on the walking on the beach in my daydream i'm you know at some office being yelled at what's going on but oh, so <laughs> so that could trigger a histamine type event oh absolutely yeah yeah and you need to think of it this way. Some people like to dwell in the future. Some people like to dwell, dwell in the past. The ones that go into the future, they're imagining things, how horrible something will turn out because they, their imagination just drives them there. 
Right. Where, whereas the reliving the past, that's usually some trauma that should be resolved and hasn't been. And that's right. it's all of these, both of these are an acidic set. Like mm -hmm. you will not be doing this unless you're acidic. If you're alkaline, you have pleasant thoughts and you will be enjoying yourself. And some people become acidic on some foods and someone else becomes um, alkaline on the same food. So you, that is correct. it depends on your metabolic typing. Yes, absolutely correct. So, yeah, so if, if I found out that I became acidic with an apple, I can't tell my sister, eat an apple if you want to be alert and acidic because she could eat it and become alkaline and fall asleep. Absolutely true. Yeah. So it's self-awareness that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not that difficult to test for it. We give it away in our podcasts. You can look up metabolic typing on Life Enthusiast website and just watch some of those talks. It's We discuss yeah. it in depth. Yeah. And, and we're going to continue to discuss it in depth. So keep tuning in. And thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time.